Once saved, always saved. Can someone lose their salvation? I know it's a hot topic amongst Christians. I'm going to say this. We all have the golden ticket. Those of us who called upon the name of the Lord for salvation. However, if your life doesn't reflect the character of God through the Holy Spirit, then consequently, your end will be like those kids in Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. What do you mean by that? Consider it the greatest spitting. I tell them I'm Christ like they envision modern Christians. I tell them I'm nothing like check conditions of how I'm living. I preach Christ, we ain't fake delivering. Listen. Candy man, as soon as they know. It's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know. It's about how much Bible you willing to obey. Just as Willy Wonka's golden ticket grants access to the magical world of his chocolate factory, Christ offers salvation as the key to eternal life in his glorious kingdom. Both invitations represent a unique opportunity to experience something extraordinary, whether it's the joy and wonder within Wonka's uh, chocolate factory or the love, the grace, you know, of God's kingdom through Christ. Now, Willy Wonka's, you know, chocolate factory, if you, everybody, if you know the, the movie, you know, it highlights a theme of hope redemption and the trans transformative power of you know operating out of a good character so much so like in you know uh you know getting into the kingdom of god you know both journeys require belief trust acceptance and the willingness to embrace something greater than ourselves just as you know the children in the story learned a valuable lesson about the character their characters and their choices and their behaviors you know we can you know we can see and can un uncover a profound truth about life purpose and the nature of God's love through our spiritual journey you know as we saw you know in the movie Charlie in Charlie the Chocolate Factory because you know at the end of the day we see you know the characteristics of those children we see the characteristics of you know Willy Wonka and you know all the you know characters that played a part you know the Oompa Loompas and all that stuff that symbolized the angels and all that stuff you know so I'm gonna need y'all to stay with me to the end because I'm taking y'all somewhere so y'all can understand how great of a salvation we have in the context you know of you know the, uh, with the conversation that's going on with once saved always saved can somebody lose their salvation I'm gonna try to help people understand it in this con in the context I'm about to, to lay out I don't want to hear that. I want Bible. And once again, when Gino asks for Bible, we give Gino Bible. Bang! Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of of his glory most people don't understand why being sealed with the holy spirit is important to our salvation now the reason the holy spirit is so important to our salvation is because the holy spirit help us understand the mind the heart the will and the character of god in christ which is i believe very important for me to help you understand you know the five characteristics of the young boys and the young girls you know in the movie willy wonka you know in a chocolate in a chocolate factory and why ultimately charlie was the only one who inherited <laughs> the kingdom of the chocolate factory so the first character we got is augustus Clue, a gluttonous boy who is obsessed with food and sweets you know his greed led him to overindulge at the chocolate factory particularly you know with chocolate augustus fell into the chocolate river and is ultimately expelled from the chocolate factory due to his lack of self-control and we see that today with a lot of christians you know they become believers or and they become a lot of leaders they, you know they get you know they get into this prosperity gospel they start getting to you know 
uh, uh, taking advantage of people in the church, taking advantage of the tithe, taking advantage of people sowing seed. They come up with all these elaborate, elaborate teachings to, you know, to, to, to be gluttonous over money and prestige. And then we see, you know, ultimately we see a lot of them fall. And, and like Augustus here, you know, they, they don't lack, they lack self-control. They gluttonous, you know, they, you know, they want the, the lavish lifestyle. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a lavish lifestyle and, you know, money and all that stuff. But the problem with with it is that they overindulge. They got greedy like old Augustus, uh, uh, Augustus here. Now, the second character we have here is Veruca Salt, a spoiled, wealthy girl who is used to getting everything she wants in life. You know, Veruca demands instant gratification and, and is particularly interested in getting a squirrel from the factory. Her entitlement leads her to her downfall when the squirrel deemed her as a bad nut and she is taken away <laughs> by them. Veruca Salt, you know, symbolize the entitled Christians who walk in, and particularly American Christians, who feel like they entitled to everything. You know, they, they enforce their, you know, entitlement and their spoiled ways on other, you know, people who may not believe in them, believe in how we believe. You know, they, you know, they kind of like force their our, our faith on people. You know, if you're don't, if you don't believe this, you're going in hell. Them type of people, you know, you know, instead of walking in true love, you know, in true compassion, bearing the fruits of the spirit, you know, they are always like like Veruca, they're religious nuts or a bad nut. And y'all want to know what I want to emphasize? When Willy Wonka said this, where all the other bad eggs go, down the garbage chute. Oh, the garbage chute. <laughs> what, what did it lead to? To the furnace. He said <laughs> she went down to where everybody else went down to was the fiery furnace. <laughs> now, the third uh, uh, character we got here is um, Violet. Now, Violet, you know, is, is a, a competitive and self-absorbed girl who is obsessed with winning. She chews gum constantly and has an overachieving attitude. When she tries Wonka's, uh, Willy Wonka's experimental gum, she turns into a giant blueberry due to the gum side effects, leading, to, leading her, you know, to her removal of the tour of the Kingdom of the Chocolate Factory. Y'all want to know the type of Christian Violet is? Violet is the type of Christian who's one of those leaders who's so self-absorbed self with their calling from God that if you don't assimilate to their ideology or the way they interpretate the scriptures, they're going to give you as some type of heretic. They're going to deem you as some type of heresy when you don't, you know, assimilate to their way of thinking. So like Violet, you know, when she chew on her gum, you know, Willy Wonka's piece of gum, you know, that was just an experiment, you know, she got puffed up you know she got puffed up she turned into a giant blueberry due to the side effects of her own self-absorbedness you know and it's the same thing like the scriptures you know don't be puffed up with conceit you know that's what the scriptures say she got so puffed up and so self-absorbed look what happened to her and it actually disqualified her and got her kicked out of you know the kingdom of the Willy Wonka chocolate factory now the next character is little old Mike <laughs> a hyperactive boy obsessed with television and uh, video games you know he's rude he's dismissive you know of the factory and all that stuff Mike tries to use the chocolate factory's technology to shrink himself down into you know the size of a chocolate bar y'all want to know the type of Christian uh, Mike is Mike is the type of Christian who's fixated on a lot of these false gospel these false prosperity teachers you know he's fixated on you know all the stuff that they do on on tv he's obsessed with the games he's obsessed with the the aesthetics of the quote-unquote church and he's very dismissive when people try to correct him and all that stuff and then he gets indulged with you know the technology and he started talking like them he started acting like them building his ministry like they did you know and ultimately you know he got so you know absorbed with that in the end you know we saw we see how 
you know, Mike went up into the tube and it was all over the place and all that stuff. You know, he's he's he stressed himself so much now he's all over the place and he don't even know who he is. That's the that's how a lot of these Christians is, you know, like like they, they uh, uh, you know, like Mike. And again, his ultimate end was he got kicked out and he's probably where Violet and where Augustus sat and all the rest of them at, you know. Now, last but not least, we got our old buddy Charlie, the protagonist of the story, the star of the story. Charlie is a kind-hearted and humble boy from, you know, humble beginnings. You know, he dreams of a better life and is selected as one of the lucky winners of the golden ticket to enter Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Charlie embodies the, you know, the values of honesty, humility, and the importance of family. Charlie actually embodies what it is to represent the fruit of the spirit. And ultimately, Charlie inherits the chocolate factory. Charlie. My boy. You won. You did it. You did it. I knew you would. I just knew you would. Oh, Charlie. Forgive me for putting you through this. Please forgive me. Each of these children represents various moral lessons and behaviors that are ultimately, you know, highlighted by their characters. Charlie's, you know, virtue stands in true contrast to the faults of the other children that was in the, cho in the chocolate factory. You know, like, just like, you know, if uh, those of us who bear the fruits of the spirit, you know, you know, we stand in virtue contrast to the people who say that they are and going to the kingdom or they are church for you know you know we stand in contrast to them because we're bearing the fruits of the spirit you know what i mean see charlie reinforces the one central theme which is bearing the fruits of the holy spirit i'm gonna keep on emphasizing that man now i'm gonna give y'all a piece of scripture bang galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such things there is no law now watch this all those kids had a golden ticket all those kids got into the chocolate factory but only one inherited the kingdom of the chocolate factory and that was again Charlie just as the children who received golden tickets was granted entry into the chocolate factory believers in Christ received the golden ticket of our salvation through faith in Christ now listen it is not merely the initial uh, confession of our faith that secures our place in God's kingdom in Christ it is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives that truly matters and the work of the Holy Spirit will be ever by the producing of the fruits of the Spirit through our lives. The sealing of the Holy Spirit serves as a mark of authenticity and assurance, guiding and transforming us as we grow in the character and, the, and produce the fruits of, you know, of the Lord through the Holy Spirit, you know, of joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those characteristics reflect a life that is truly devoted to Christ and demonstrate our willingness to follow his ways. Now, it's not about works. It is not about works. It's literally about surrendering our life through, through, through Christ by way of the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us in all, into all truth and produce the fruits of his spirit. It's not about works. Because I know some people will come on here and say, oh, you're preaching works. No, I'm preaching be led by the Holy Spirit and in that being led by the Holy Spirit will produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit will be evident.
In this sense, while we all have access to the premise of salvation, it is the cultivation of a Christ-like character and uh, reliance on the Holy Spirit that ultimately sustains our place in his eternal kingdom. The journey of our faith is one that involves both an initiation of acceptance and an ongoing transformation by way of the Holy Spirit. Y'all get that? In conclusion, once saved, always saved. Can someone lose their salvation? I know it's a hot topic amongst Christians. I'm going to say this. We all have the golden ticket. Those of us who called upon the name of the Lord for salvation. However, if your life doesn't reflect the character of God through the Holy Spirit, then consequently, your end will be like those kids in Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Uh, you know, although they received the golden ticket, although, you know, they received entry into the kingdom of the chocolate factory, their character and their poor behavior while in the kingdom, while in the chocolate factory was short lived. Now, before y'all try to pick apart this podcast and try to say what well, I left out or I should have said this or I should have said that, listen, just know this. If me telling people to rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit for their salvation, which seals us unto the day of our salvation is a problem, then you have a bigger problem than what I'm saying. You, you, something is truly wrong with you because at the end of the day, y'all know my slogan. It's not about how much Bible you know, it's about how much Bible you're willing to obey. That's the conclusion of the scriptures. Amen. Y'all already know, man. It's your boy St. Reese, man. I thank y'all for rocking out with me, man. Make sure y'all go to our merch store. It's the, the description is down at the bottom, man. Check out this hoodie. We got the Gut and Saint hoodie. We got the Vintage Saint collection. We got some dope product in our merch store, man. I thank y'all for rocking out with me. And I catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Considered the greatest spitting. I tell them I'm Christ like they envision modern Christian. I tell them I'm nothing like the conditions of how I'm living. I preach Christ, we ain't fake delivering this. Candy man, as soon as they know. It's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know, it's about how much Bible you willing to obey.